Hey, BTK Podcast Episode 6. BTK, does that roll off the tongue? Does that sound cool? Or we- I think it's a cool acronym. BTK. BTK. BT Killer. BT Killer Podcast Episode 6. Yeah. <laughs> Play that intro, dog. <laughs> <laughs> what it do, what it does, where you been, where you was, what it ain't, what it is. Facing the mud, I really be hating the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know Goon put too much bass in a sub, cut full of blood, and I gave it a chug. Wait till your neighbors get all snug, then play this real loud where you live. <laughs> Get right to it. <laughs> Run that cycle, King. <laughs> Let's just do the intro for like an hour. Yeah. Just loop it so we don't have to do a, t- a conversation. Hey, we actually have nothing to talk about today. Uh, <laughs> Every time it's like we get into these, it, it, it takes focus. You got to like. It's like an active activity to have this guy. I'm an idiot. Dude, it's, these comments are also freaking me out. People are like, oh, you know what's great about this? Nikhil and Thomas have such a good friendship. That's why it's so good. <laughs> wow, are you guys wrong? <laughs> I'm like, now if we get into a little tiff, it's going to screw everything up. (laughs) Yes. I'll just be like, sorry, man. Quitting the podcast. I'm against murder now. (laughs) Hey, listen, we got a couple sponsors for this episode, so let's knock them out of the way. Mm -hmm. Our first sponsor is Acorns, which is an investing app. Up until now, I haven't done a good job of investing, but after my taxes fuck me this year. I'm going to really get hardcore about saving and investing just because you know the business model is we no longer need to buy another lens there's no there's no lenses left for me to buy actually there is the 50 millimeter g master there's a lot of stuff left to buy but if you invest your money your money can actually work for you rather than just spending it in needless directions you know some people i admire mj demarco I don't admire Robert Kiyosaki, but he does make this good point about how your money, you should treat it as like a soldier. Every dollar should be a soldier that's placed in the battlefield to bring back more soldiers for you. And that's what investing is. I mean, it can be in many different directions. It could be you investing in your business as well. But uh, Acorns is a platform that makes it really easy to save and invest. So Acorns are kindly giving my viewers an exclusive offer. You'll get a $20 bonus investment if you sign up with the link in my description within 30 days. After that, you can still get a $10 bonus investment, but act fast for the limited offer. Go to get.acorns.com slash Captain Sinbad. Some terms and conditions apply. Our second sponsor is Millinote. Now this is actually an extra push I'm doing for Millinote because I adore them. They have been so good to me. They're not even paying us extra money to sell this. We're just... We're literally just pitching Millinote because I am like loyal to them. Like they have my loyalty. Yeah, I mean, it's a great app. It's the best interface I've seen out of any of the apps that we've used for like making plans or storyboarding anything like the 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 most user-friendly good-looking interface a lot of people who watch my channel they want to be youtubers themselves or filmmakers themselves i didn't realize this sooner but one of the fastest ways to get to the next level as a filmmaker is to be able to outplan the other guy. Mm -hmm. i like turn everything into like a plot of like competition and revenge (laughs) but you know if you can plan what you want a certain shot to look like you don't need to have as much gear as the other guy you can just like figure out a shot list and a plan for getting so many different kinds of footage that you can turn into a narrative arc with just one camera and one lens totally you don't need a ton of gear anymore to make great great stuff the time you spend planning will save you so much effort in the execution and Milanote is this software that's really really fantastic for that I not only use it for videos especially when we make cinematic videos but also just to make mood boards or storyboards for different aspects of my life like Mm. when we were first renovating this house I would use Milanote just to track inspiration like the fact that I now have a purple wall behind me and these white shelves it was all like thought through in a way of like a vibe I wanted to create in my place so If you're a creative of any kind or an aspiring creative, check out Milanote. They're also in the description box below. I believe it's milanote.com slash Captain Sinbad. Mm -hmm. It's free to use. You can just download it, start using Milanote, start storyboarding your efforts. Our third sponsor is Sinsama. I've pitched them many times before, but Sinsama is a calendar blocking app that I use every single day to plot out just three to four hours of work. If you have a bunch of stuff on your to-do list, you're not even gonna get anything meaningful done. Honestly, on any given day, you've got one or two things you need to do. And what I like to do with Sinsama is to plan out my entire week in advance of like, hey, what are the few big rocks this week that I should get done to really move the needle forward, to help get our business to a seven figure business, to answer these bigger questions. I love Sinsama because it's really easy to move those big item pieces, like drag them over on any day of the week. And then I can like every Sunday, which 
These episodes come out every Sunday. I want this for the people who really get invested into this podcast. I want it to turn into like a Sunday ritual where mm. we make our battle plans every Sunday. Hopefully the podcast episode gives you some new ideas, maybe not even an idea, a new mindset to carry forth into the week to, to get after it that week. And alongside that, planning out the week, Ayu Sama. I don't know. It makes me feel like a war general or a true warrior, a tactician getting ready to attack the week. I mean, I track my workouts. I track the stuff I have to get done for the business. So many elements of my life are put on Sansama. I can put down how many hours every activity is going to take. It also integrates really seamlessly into mobile. Check them out. I believe it's around $20 a month to use Sansama. But if you use my link in the description box, you get a free trial just to see what it's like. Mm. It could really make a difference in your productivity. No harm in just giving it a shot, fellas. These are brands I believe in. These are things that I actually use on a daily basis. Yeah. That's the podcast format, man. It's like more honest than ever. And that includes the brand integrations. Mm. And now quickly, we got to plug ourselves. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you find podcasts. We're on Stitcher, Deezer. If we're not on a podcast platform and you guys want to see us there, put it in the comments and we'll be on that podcast platform the next day. And while we're at it, we're both on Instagram. We are. <laughs> and Raja Pandey and Mammoth in Space. Mm -hmm. Give us a follow. Hit us with a DM. There's a chance we'll respond. Probably will. Definitely give you a heart, though. <laughs> it definitely will give you a heart. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know why I want to grow my Instagram, but it just makes me feel cooler. It makes me feel like I have value. Well, I just compare my Instagram followers to uh, people I know from high school. And if I don't have more followers than them, I feel empty inside. I got to be honest. The main reason I want more followers is just to make people from high school feel bad. Correct. I just crossed my twin sister in Instagram followers. Suck it. <laughs> did you really? I did. <laughs> oh, just now? <laughs> uh, like a, yeah, a couple days ago. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, loser. <laughs> Come get me. <laughs> Today's episode is an interesting one because we're addressing incels, the black pill ideology a little bit, especially some of these ideas that I kind of got from this YouTuber Wheat Waffles, who I brought up in our first episode. Mm -hmm. um, and how maybe it'll be a little bit of a debate or at least we're going to hash it out like is the black pill has it become more relevant because of dating apps i mean dating apps have completely changed the game for what is valuable in the sexual marketplace in the world of attraction yes totally set the stage a little bit because you gave me a little bit of a grounding yesterday in, in what exactly has occurred because of dating apps and i just give me a little bit of that yeah, so only 10% of male profiles get engagement on dating apps. It's something like that. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's just for every... I've never like been on a dating app as a woman or anything. Right. But if a woman even sees a man's profile, it means that he has sort of been selected for by these dating app algorithms. Mm -hmm. Because the majority of men are not attractive to women on these dating apps. In fact, they're, they're, it's just their standards for male beauty have consciously or subconsciously have gotten much higher. Right. And back in the day, if you're trying to, you had all these ways that you would implement to try to get a woman's attention. It was much more in the norm to just have a quick interaction with a woman and then say, hey, listen, I'd love to grab a coffee with you sometime. Now you can still do that today, but it's just not in the culture. It's not in the zeitgeist. No, it's, and definitely I think your rate of success for a thing like that has gone way down. And for an average man, your perceived creepiness at doing something like that. I mean, I would love for this not to be true, but I just think it is because it is. I consider myself a modestly good looking guy, you mm -hmm. know? And I think I myself would have to guard against coming across as creepy if I like went up to a girl at a bar and tried to say, Hey, I'm just trying to like, I, I think I could still pull it off. Yes. But I, I would have to like overcome. It's like, I have to prove to you. I'm not like some weirdo who's like, ah, um, I'd like the coffee, you know, like I would have to just, <laughs> yeah. And even now, like girls are just on edge in a way they have not been in the past. I feel like, and you know, maybe a lot of that is warranted. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think you even with girls that I've dated, it's like on date three, I'm like still trying to prove to you I'm not a creep. I, you know, there have been times where I've had, in my opinion, like a perfectly executed date. Mm. I just like I look good. I look sharp. Haircuts on point. I'm just perfectly respectable. 
I make the girl laugh the entire time of that first date. I like pay for the date just because I'm like, look at me, I have resources. And then, <laughs> and then, and then I'll like maybe go in for the hug at the end of the date. Just keep it really like gentlemanly, you know? Yep. Which maybe some people be like, no, girls don't like gentlemen. They like it when you just rape them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like, Ayn Rand would, uh, you know, support that argument. But yeah. I, you know, I'm going to go out and say I disagree. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. Yeah. There'll be like, oh yeah, you have to maintain frame. Like, look, dude, I'm not going to. I karate chop the hose. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna be a gentleman, okay? I'm not. I, I really am on the first date trying to prove to her that I'm not a psycho. Yes. And I think like, and even after if she's texted me after the first date, she'll be like, "Wow, that was so refreshingly amazing." Like you're so, and then ghosted. Ghosted. Yeah. When when you go in for the hug though, I was expecting does she like shy away? Does she is she like whoa? No, it's like because <laughs> it wasn't even like a hug. We're like, yeah, yeah. It was just like a. Hey, great to meet you. Like, d- keeping our personal spaces One respected. Of those, like pat hugs. Where yeah, you're like, yeah. It's like I don't know how to end this. Or sometimes I have made a joke out of it. Like, you know, like yes. whatever. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, there have been times where I've been on a first date and I've just been, in my opinion, just perfectly amicable and cool and put together. And I still am just not not selected for. Yeah, man. I mean, I I I can tell you, I've been ghosted more than a few times. You know. And I feel like, wow, every time the reason that like it almost hurts getting ghosted is because you're like, it was going so well. You're like, what happened in your brain? Why don't you love me? (laughs) (laughs) And I mean, is it okay to say we are above average men? Are we not? I'm awesome. Yes, of course. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, people. I know some people in the comments like to say like, oh, Nikhil, he's fallen off. He's gotten fat. He like doesn't look as good. Okay. I've been on a ball. Yeah, show me what you look like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> there was a good comment that said we're really both of us are really insecure. And guess what, pal? You're correct. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Just dissecting us psychologically in the comments. Yeah, dude, I love the negative comments. They'll be like, these guys are mad coping. I'm like, what else is there? <laughs> That's exactly what how do you like. how do you expect what sh- what's the alternative? Not coping and just playing video games? Of course I'm coping. Yeah. I'm trying to be- just be the best <laughs> I can be. Try to not fall to pieces. I can either accept failure, like, oh, I accept myself as a failure, or I can cope by trying to be better. Yeah. Of course I'm going to cope. I, like, just don't understand a lot of the comments fundamentally, but that's fine. I try not to read them. Yeah. And I mean, for every one negative comment, we get 10 people saying, like, the podcast is actually helping. Yeah. So... In modern times, if I feel like it's not a part of the culture or it's not as acceptable to approach someone in person, dating today, it looks like the dating apps. When we talk about dating or meeting someone on a date, I think 90% of people are meeting on the apps. Mm -hmm. That's my guess. I'd maybe even go like even more. Yeah. Maybe some people are still meeting at the office or something like that. Or you both take a a Zumba class together. I don't know what people do, you know? I don't do that stuff. I don't have any hobbies. I don't have any friends. So I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, I box, but I just... All of my friends I made on the internet. (laughs) Yeah, kind of true. So maybe some people are still meeting through hobbies, mutual friends at a party. But even that, I feel like just... The percentage is going down. It's the apps. It's the apps, man. And more than ever, also, people are trapped by this paradox of choice where even if they are dating someone on on an app or starting to date someone, it's like, I think there's a longer period between going on a date, we're talking, we're dating, and also still seeing other people because you keep the app on your phone and you're still swiping. I know both partners, they're still swiping, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you kind of like the person, you've gone on a few dates with someone, like you're still swiping just in case there's someone hotter. Yep. It's like no one's satisfied with the... The amount of people that I also just know now, like in kind of like open relationships, it's like, what does that mean? That, that just means that you're like, you just have an eye out for somebody better. That's it. You, you don't want to commit because you think you can do better. And I think there's a lot of that going on. It's pretty sad in some ways because, I mean, not that I have not fa- fallen prey to such things. Yeah. I have to, I kind of have to like have conversations with myself about this argument because uh, I feel like it's a faulty logic ultimately. Mm-hmm. Like in some ways, a relationship or dating someone only becomes better or cooler 
because there's a compounding effect benefit of knowing someone longer and longer. Yes. And even if compatibility isn't a hundred percent, like maybe even it's as low as 70% compatibility. Mm. Like if you're cool enough and dope enough together, then the longer you know someone and uh, th- there's something really interesting that unfolds just in like time invested, mm. unless your compatibility you realize really wasn't there and maybe some things were distracting you from the reality of things. Like maybe you both like to just have sex, but you actually have nothing in common. Yeah. Or maybe you, you're just like good drinking buddies and you like to like go restaurant hop and have drinks together. But when it comes down to it without the restaurants and the drinks, you actually don't have a ton of compatibility. Yep. Maybe some things distract you from the truth of the thing. But for the most part, this whole paradox of choice thing, I think, I, I think it's keeping a lot of people single and unhappy because they're just like unable to fully go there. Yeah, I agree. And going back to the first point, when a man shows up on a woman's dating profile, that means there have been nine men who are literally below the iceberg, they will just never show up on her feed. Mm. And this has been kind of like proven by a lot of people who work on these apps in San Francisco, like yeah. on the back end. Mm-hmm. Like the majority of men are not showing up on women. They just women's, don't even get put in the feed at all. They don't get put in the feed. And so like, how does that even like, so you just make an account and you don't even get a chance. I Okay. So I kind of mentioned to this, to this to you when I first met you, because yeah. you didn't have a ton of pictures for a dating profile when Correct. I first met you, right? Yeah. And um, my own experience before I became a U- YouTuber and one of the advantages of being a, a YouTuber with prime lenses, I can always take a dope photo of myself if I want to. Yep. I always look the way I do now, right? Mm-hmm. Back when I was 25 and I downloaded a dating app for the first time and I put up photos of myself, the photos were not like, I mean, I just know so much about how to make myself look awesome in photos now. Boca, the har- Rembrandt lighting. I just know so much stuff. Like yeah. the, even the clothes I wear and stuff and the yeah. location that I choose to take a photo in. So I wouldn't have access to all that back in the day. So I would just put, put up the photos I had of myself, which is just like me with a friend, you know? Yeah. And so my profile was not optimized for the algorithm. Like you need great photos as a man, as any, I mean, as anyone, it's like, it's an algorithm. These, you forget these things are like, it's not about like, oh, just be yourself as a human yeah, being. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, you can't be wide rosy eyed about it. Like It's just like when we upload YouTube videos, before I started caring about titles and thumbnails and the reason we might now put like men or women in the title of a YouTube video, video which I wouldn't even think to do a year ago. Yeah. It's because we care about the algorithm. Yeah. And just like how YouTube is an algorithm, Instagram has an algorithm, so does, t- so does Tinder. And it's like, we care about the algorithm, but you got to remember, the algorithm does not care about you. Like Absolutely. All it sees are the pictures and the titles, and that's it. So the majority of guys, especially, they don't have great photos. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe like the average guy isn't good en- good looking enough. Yeah. I mean, by virtue of being average, you are not above average, right? So uh, they like anyone who's even slightly above average or below, like their their profiles are not compelling enough to show up on women's feeds because mm. women get such a high swipe rate, like right. positive swipe rate. Whereas when they're swiping on us, they're so much more selective. Yeah. And so now because of these algorithms, women are swiping for a much higher standard of male beauty than ever before. I mean, when I have conversation with women in real life, they would always say something like, you know, looks aren't as important to me. Or money isn't as important to me as something like emo- compatibility, emotional intelligence, all that stuff. But I'm like, actually, you don't even realize how much more important looks have gotten for you. Yeah. I, it, I've heard that from my girlfriend and yeah. I, I'm like, it's just... You're like, shut You're up. Insane. You do care about what looks. What are you talking about? Like everybody does. They're like, girls don't care about looks as much as guys do. And like, that might be true, but still like it's, it's, it's literally the thing. It's the gatekeeper, you know? But there was this whole like era where like the dad bod is like, oh, dad bods are attractive because it's like, he's fit, but he's still down to have a beer. Yes. I'm like the guy that you're labeling as a dad bod has been hitting it hard at the gym. For like a dad years. bod to them <laughs> is like Jason Momoa on vacation. Yes. He's like, he's fucking strong as hell. And he also just had a few beers on vacation. Yeah. I forget. I forget who that guy is that made that like short video, but <laughs> yeah. he nailed it perfectly where it was Chris Pratt at the beach. And it's like, <laughs> Chris Pratt is huge. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
Yeah. yeah. Listen, woman, you like a fit body. Stop telling us otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, the dad bod, like, you know, you don't want to, bo- that, it seems like it would be a below average body. If you took an average dad, you don't want the average dad though. It's just like a misnomer. I mean, I know it's politically incorrect to be fat phobic these days. All I'm saying though is if you're fat at all, honestly, if you're above 15% body fat, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And I'm like, I'm like probably like 24% body fat right now. So <laughs> I'm sure I've like, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm above this, you know, I'm just saying like being lean and being like having a nice physique is kind of like you have to have that now, even to like register on the radar a little bit. It's a big asset for sure. You know, um, I, like you said, when I met Nikhil, that's when I started to, uh, up my picture game, mostly because of him. Cause I had never had anyone to take pictures of me before, yep. you know? And so Nikhil would take these little action shots of me and then, whoa, start getting way more matches than I've ever gotten in my life. You know? Yeah. I mean, I remember we were just like comparing our experiences and you'd just be like, well, yeah, I don't seem to get a lot of matches with people I like. And I'm like, it's literally just the photos. Dude. Yeah. It's just the photos. And then, and then, I mean, I literally just changed them and nothing else changed. And then bam, started getting matches, you know? And like, we've had the conversation where like, also when you kind of age up, you get more matches, I think, but I think it's 99% the photos. It's wild out there. Yes. It's like in the media, there's been all this attention about women and unrealistic beauty standards. Mm. I don't think the media at large fully understands that men now have actually an insane pressure to look good more than ever. Just because our beauty is, it's not quite as much as women's. Uh, like in terms of the pressure to look good, but it's it has been climbing over the years, largely because of these apps. There's no sympathy for the kings out there, brother. <laughs> yeah, there's no sympathy. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's just like true. Like I would have never expected myself to become someone who's so, you know, conscious of how I look all the time. But maybe it's also just the kind of medium that we are find ourselves in, where we're on camera all the time. But yeah, it's definitely something where. You're well dressed, you're put together, like you notice it has a different effect on people. You notice you register differently on an app, on a social media. The the most responses I get to a photo are when I show off my biceps, you know? It's like clearly these things work. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't be so motivated by my aesthetics and v- vanity-based metrics if it wasn't so financially and like socially rewarding. If I didn't immediately see the biggest returns like <laughs> it's just a fact it's un- it's undeniable and that's why when i hear like looks aren't that important I'm shut like, up i can literally prove to you right now yeah. that they are yeah yeah there's a meme of it's a common fitness meme mm-hmm. where it's like when you start lifting what you expect and yeah. it's like a guy is getting a bunch of attention from girls yep and then like what actually happens is just a bunch of dudes being like oh my god bro you're so big <laughs> <laughs> so the meme is like only men care about f- guys being fit which is a big truth yes like in the details that is true yes in terms of like when i put up an instagram video of me lifting hey i just hit 405 on the deadlift hit that it yeah, was a big boy. milestone for me with my end of 2022 goal, and I just freaking got it. Smashed it. It's mostly dudes who are responding to that, being like, King. King. <laughs> <laughs> Which we do appreciate. Don't get us wrong. I love it, dude. For anyone who's done that for me, like, I love you so much. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> it's the only thing that gets me through the day, guys. But women appreciate it, too. Totally. Sometimes I can just... I mean, I've gotten direct messages, like honestly, even from some of my like married friends, you know, like is saying it very, you know, not in a, like a sexually advancing way. Just be like, wow, you look great. Yeah. But I mean, everyone appreciates you when you are fitter and more handsome. Yeah. I mean, like, and we can sit here and kind of whine like, oh, that's sad. They should like me for me. Or we can accept reality and be like, how do I maximize this? <laughs> you know? I mean, Okay. Here's a question for you, because in the two years that I've known you, you've had a dr- drastic change. I mean, of course, since when when you were, you know, not at your fittest, but in the two years I've met you, you've probably gone from like 160 yeah. to 185 pounds. Yeah. And you're like, I would guess you're like 
twelve percent body fat. Like he looks fantastic. Yeah, I have no idea what body fat percentage I am. Yeah, but yeah, is there a question attached to that? The question is, as the years have progressed, these last two years especially, um, because you looked fine before, you just look like an average guy. Yeah. Do you feel like you get a different vibe on the streets or out and about? Because even in my six months of lifting, I've noticed a huge difference of like the public perception of me, like as I'm going about my life. I mean, just, yeah, it's of course, you know, um, men, of course, call me ripped, say I've gotten way bigger. Women comment on it. My family's commented on it. Everybody, when they see me, if you have not seen me for a while, people say I've gotten taller. And I think that's because my frame is more imposing now, you know, uh, like everybody is like, oh my God. Like if, if, if it's an old friend that hasn't seen me for a while, it's like, oh my God, what happened? And then just people in the street, I mean, you know, you wear a flattering shirt now. It's like, I have things to show off, you know? And now it's been winter, so we've been in the shadows. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm expecting some looks come summer. You know? I, I'm so early into my fitness journey. I'm like, you know, six months in that I thought I had nothing to show off yet anyway. I was like, whatever. I'm just, I'm just, I'm enjoying the journey. Like it truly, I've become passionate about fitness mm -hmm. in a very, in a sense that the reward of looking good, of course it's a motivator, but literally the, just the act of pursuing the next challenge and making progress, that's reward in itself for me. Yeah. But I think I was just walking i was running errands i had to do all these annoying errands one week you were gone mm -hmm. and uh i just noticed i think i got three looks they were all from like women who were over 50 and one of them was she was like with her family but it was like looking at me and then just like this warm welcoming smile like just like kind of like straight up she was admiring my body yeah and i was like i didn't think i had a body worth admiring yet i mean i mean, probably have put on like five, six pounds of muscle. I mean, you definitely have, if not more, yeah. like I know for a fact that your shoulders and traps have gotten way bigger. You actually have triceps to speak of now. Like, you know, I think you just haven't, you, you're too close to yourself. You mm -hmm. see yourself every day. It's hard yep. to notice. Yep. I have noticed a large change. Thanks man. Yeah. And I, I was like, Oh, no one's going to pay attention to a noob getting stronger. Right. They actually still pay attention. Well, that's also just when you're going to put on the most drastic amount of muscle. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've made the most drastic changes that I will make. I probably have another six months of still making drastic changes. Yes. But after the first year, it, it will slow down substantially. So looks matter more than ever. To what degree do looks matter now? Because let's say the four parameters of sexual market value are still there, right? We got looks, money, status, game. Mm. Those are like the four pillars of the red pill <laughs> in terms of attraction. Yes. I would say back in the day with game, let's put in emotional intelligence alongside game. Back in the day, I personally would have labeled game as like 40%. Because mm. I look back at the guys in college and high school, honestly, a lot of guys in general, there were so many guys who I felt were like not as sexy as me growing up. Yeah. But they would be better with women than me. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just game, right? They can just, they were just more charismatic, like laughter, be using humor, getting a girl to laugh is like one of the sh sh most surefire indicators that you're doing something right. Yes. Humor is one of the most powerful things there is. That's a big one. You know, that's kind of game. Essentially. It is game. It's just a great tool to have. Yeah. Yeah. Which sucks because I don't actually know how to be funny most of the time. <laughs> no, I think that's, that is how both of us get through any date is like making the chick laugh. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I would label that. Okay. That was 40% importance back in the day. It was too early in the game. Like women didn't care about money and status that much when I was a young guy. Cause it's like, they don't expect anyone to have money or status. Everyone's yeah. we're all in college. We're all broke. Kind yeah. Of, you know? And so I would say the majority of it was game and looks. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like maybe game has dropped quite a bit and looks has gone like the other three have gone up a lot. In some ways game is still important. I don't know what the most important ones is anymore. I will say looks has gone up a lot though. The thing about looks is it's, it's the thing that gets you in the door. I think sadly, like without a certain level of looks, no matter how good your game, your game money status could be maxed out. But if your looks are below threshold, you're never going to get the girl, you know? It's like you have to meet the requirement of looks. Whereas with every other category, that's not the case. You know what RSD Tyler looks like, of course. Yes. So he's a little chubby. Got a nice beard. He's got a nice overly thick beard. Receding and he's like hairline. Super balding. Yep. 
not much of a looker. No. I once, he had invited me, I mentioned this on a previous episode, but he had invited me to LA to come like hang with him for a day. And I showed up to one of his like night game boot camp. He just said like, I didn't know I was going to be doing this, but it was like 2 a.m. And he was like, yeah, we're at in Santa Monica, like, or we're hitting on women tonight. Like he's like, he was teaching one of his things, like men from all over fly in. They pay like three grand to like watch him hit on women. It's, really weird. it's really weird. It's actually super sad. Yeah. But as we were leaving the bungalow in Santa Monica, there was a girl who was making out with this dude who's probably like, I want to say 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, yeah. Wearing a black V-neck, super muscular, handsome as fuck, great hair. Like the kind of guy I would look at and be like, "There's, I'm just, ne- bro, you got this one. Like you actually have me beat in every way. Like you're so, so handsome. Got and it. so fit and tall. Like straight up just model good looks. Yep. And she was just like, I mean, I think he was straight up like pulling, pulling on the back of her hair while she was just like, she's like, you own me basically was the vibe. Mm. And RSD Tyler, Owen Cook, <laughs> like some goblin, <laughs> <laughs> just started like, he's like, watch this. And then he started like pestering them and he's like, hey. And he was just like starting, he was like interrupting what looked like makeout session, a straight up like makeout session in public. Okay. And he was like, hey. You like this? He was like doing all this weird stuff. Of course, wearing his like RSD Tyler weird clothes. The terrible clothing. The worst fashion sets I've ever seen. And in an attempt to kind of like belittle RSD Tyler, that tall, handsome dude kind of like grabbed his beard. He sounded foreign. He was like, mm, I like your beard. I'm going to come on it or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He like kind of was trying to put him down. And then RSD Tyler was like, oh, yeah, are you in? <laughs> <laughs> and uh. this girl started like her body language started shifting to Owen cook. Damn. Like she just was like, she was like starting to laugh at him and he was like, mm, I'm going to do something. I don't know what he was saying, but he was straight up fucking with their energy. And I could see this tall, handsome guy, like some panic start to set in. Oh man. Like Owen cook actually has insane game. The guy is not a fake. Yes. No, I believe it. I believe he has maxed out the game to a million. I was like, Going into that, I'd be like, there's no way anyone could interfere with that guy's like control over this woman in this moment. Yeah. He disrupted everything. He was literally fucking this dude shit up. Listen, <laughs> I, you know, mad respect to Owen Cook. As much as we talk about him, cool guy. <laughs> yeah, cool guy in a lot of ways. So, I mean, game is powerful. Yes. I, I, don't, agree. Really, I don't quite understand what it is. Like, I feel like I just am me, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I, I've never like studied game in a way to learn it. I am naturally just, I'm just not that interested in studying game. Neither am I. I'm like, I, I feel like I get by well enough, you know, I'm not super socially awkward. So I don't feel like it's necessary to me. Um, but I think these other three pillars, like they have their importance. And like you said, if you like get in there and you pass the looks threshold and then you're in there and your game is trash, you could lose the chick that you had gotten like on the hook, you know? So I think I think so. I think you need to be a well-rounded person in terms of your looks money status game. There is a concept that Charlie Munger, who is the business partner of Warren Buffett, long time long-time partner, Berkshire Hathaway, he calls the Lollapalooza effect, which is that if you like most people most of us are do not have true mastery on any one thing. Now the fastest road to wealth and fame is to have true mastery over one craft. You pick whatever it is, um if you can become exceptional at something, your life is pretty much sorted. Yeah. But, and it's the, the strange thing about today's economy. You could be good at literally, you could be world-class at poker. Whereas was like a hundred years ago, you being amazing at poker, like means nothing, right? It's poker. It's not, it's not a, a, an industry with scale and leverage. It's yep. just a talent. Mm-hmm. You could be world-class at chess. Like what does chess do for people? But today, if you're a grandmaster in chess, your life is made. Mm. But most of us will never be the grandmaster. No. Not even close. Most of us, if we work super hard, we can aspire to be like a six out of 10 on a global scale. Like you and I, we adore filmmaking. We adore content creation in YouTube. We might be a five if we really look at like the top tier creators, you know, even Peter McKinnon is not a 10 out of 10 filmmaker. No. So you look at how long and how much work it is to be truly exceptional. Most of us will never get there, but most of us could probably get to a five or six on a couple different things. Mm. And it's what Chris from First Man would call the straight seven system. You aim to be a seven at a bunch of things. 
And that the amalgamation of that is worth more than the sum. Mm. If you become a straight seven across like looks, money, game, status, which is actually maybe it's not even realistic. Maybe you could be a straight six across the board. Yeah. It makes you so high overall. Your overall number becomes like a nine. Maybe like in your local community, a 10. Yeah. Because... Everyone's got their weakest link, you know, and you just don't somehow if you cover your bases. And I think the problem with like dating apps is like you never get a chance to really show off uh, money status or game because you are stuck with the pictures. That is Uh, it. That's the thing, man. That's that has been a big limiting. Yeah, that's a great point. It's like it's like if if they I, I just know, like if if you guys took me on a date, I'd win you over with my personality, but I don't get the opportunity. Or you honestly, know? I feel like women, when when you go on a date with them, they have such goldfish memories for how you made them feel. I don't whatever. <laughs> I, that, maybe that's a women rude thing to say. Women have small brain. <laughs> this is how I felt about certain dates. I'm like, I made you. If you would only remember that you had a great time on this, you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd love me, which is true. I do. I feel that way too. Cause I'm like, I'm awesome. How do you not, you, you remember I was awesome on that date. Right. I mean, so you need, you repeatedly need looks as a way. It's like, that's the only one that you don't have to like have a, your portfolio on hand. Like I'm like, just in case you know, I am actually fucking rich. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't just say that. No, sadly not. <laughs> yeah. Just lengthen your channel. Oh, you're into pottery? That's cool. <laughs> I make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, why I think, you know, the it's like sad that dating apps have such prevalence. I mean, like you and I have done fine on them. We're not the men who are ignored. But I think it's like, you know, Owen Cook's day uh, of doing that sort of thing, I think is like coming to a serious end if it hasn't like very much already. What do you mean by that? Like the game thing? People yeah, don't like use? people aren't as receptive. Like we stated in the beginning, people are not as receptive to cold approaches. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just, it seems out of loop with the times, you know? And it's like now the videos I see on YouTube are like, get your Tinder game on point, you know? Like uh, the text game on point on Tinder. And I'm like... That's crazy to me like that. You already lost almost like I'm like, I don't feel like I can exercise a good game in the messages. It's all about like the actual meeting and to get to the meeting. It's like all I really have are my pictures. It's so off kilter. And then you wonder why a lot of people stay single these days. It's like the universe, the infrastructure around dating is so it's so whack. Well, I thought about this for a while. It's like, what is the dating apps goal? You know, it's not to find you a relationship. The dating app's goal is to keep you on the dating app, right? Yeah, spend money on the dating app. That's the goal of any social media. It's to keep you there. And so these dating apps, they don't want you to get a relationship because then you don't use them anymore. That's the dating app failing in a sense. I actually didn't even think about that. Yeah. And the majority of revenue on these apps come from men spending money. Of course. I mean, women don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. But in the beginning, you touched on something that I'm just not too familiar with, which is black pill. Mm. And then I want to talk about incels. Yeah, yeah. Black pill and incels. So Chris Williamson on his podcast, Modern Wisdom, had brought up this great... He had this great conversation um, with someone whose name I'm forgetting. But they talked about how there is now a growing incel population because a lot of men are becoming like unable to attract women because the rules are just different. You know, back in the day you could use some of these other advantages or just like uh, people would be more receptive to dating each other just out of proximity. You know, Mm -hmm. we met at work, so we're just going to date. Yep. And now people aren't limited in the same way. So what ends up happening is women receive way more attention than men on dating apps on Instagram. You know, if a girl puts up a selfie on Instagram, it's like, she doesn't have to do anything. Right. It's just like, (laughs) And uh, she'll get like probably like whatever fifty fire emojis from a bunch of dudes who <laughs> nah the water drip the water drip oh yeah that yeah. one too uh, and that is just like a sign to her this artificial meter I'm really attractive mm-hmm. and so it creates this I hate talking in such crude language but it creates this perception her perceived value in herself is higher than it actually is yeah social media has distorted her looks yes you're not as hot as the attention you're getting yeah if if without social media you would not get the same amount of attention correct so what it does is 
women now only will date the top 10% of men. And these top 10% of men are reluctant to settle down because that means a handful of guys are getting a ton of attention on dating apps. And they're like, oh, this is great. Yeah. They've pretty much got like this harem opening up of like all these women showing them attention. Yep. Because the attention has to go somewhere. It's just not going to the average guy anymore. Yes. And because of technology, more these, these interactions can happen more. So the high status men are having more casual relationships with a bunch of women. But these women, theoretically, they are they think something is different is happening. They think they're like maybe dating or like they have a shot of moving into we're talking right now, but we can start dating. Mm-hmm. But really, these men will never settle down with these women. They think these women are good enough to have sex with. Yeah. But they're not good enough to like commit to. Right. That's that's what's kind of starting to happen here. Yeah. But the the women don't realize that's what's happening. They just think like, oh, they don't realize that they're kind of sharing this man with other women. Right. Which is kind of messed up. Like that means that the women aren't happy either. It's like no one's happy anymore except for like the handful of high status men. Yeah. And more because those high status men aren't getting into relationships. Those women aren't ending up in relationships. And the men that are being And the incel ignored, population yeah, that's growing. growing. It's like some of these guys shouldn't even have to be incels. They're perfectly reasonable guys. Yes. But they're just being shunted out because of the... The way the algorithm works. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah, like like you said, it's like more people are probably single than ever before in history, I would bet. And the way Chris Williamson put it on the podcast is like, that's kind of a dangerous thing. Or Chris had actually also had a conversation with Jordan Peterson. Mm. This really beautifully shot. Yep. Really long conversation. They talked about how there's now a popula- population decline in the West, partially because of some of these factors. If people are not dating in a committed way, they're not having kids. Yeah. And so like... <laughs> Potentially the collapse of the West could come like this is actually a more dangerous thing than just like a bunch of sad guys not having sex. Yeah. It's potentially a dangerous thing or uh, Andrew Schultz had this great sketch about like the, the kids who shoot up. Schools. That's what I was also going to say. It's like also dangerous because incels be crazy, but go on. Yeah. Yeah. That. It's like the kids who shoot up schools. Like a lot of that is driven by, <laughs> but like not getting access to like, sex and stuff yeah you know? so it's a dangerous thing he had this joke about like if teachers really want to stop school violence they need to suck these kids off then <laughs> empty balls create safe halls yes <laughs> and while it's a great joke it also i think has a kernel of truth in it yeah it's like the one of the books that has stuck with me so much is of mice and men mm. something i read in high school yep and it's a book about men and women like there's only one female character in that book but dealing with loneliness Loneliness is one of the most powerful maladies there is. It really is, man. And uh, it's like people are being lonelier than ever (laughs) because of a lack of like being able to create true intimacy. And it's really the loneliness that creates these problems. Even like problems today with like overindulgence in porn or drugs and stuff. Like truly one of the best safeguards against addiction of any kind is having a sense of community. Yep, totally. And I can recognize this more because somehow I've entered, like I'm actually really happy these days, but maybe it was a year ago where I just felt profoundly lonely. Mm. And I realized I was like, I'm starting to get everything I wanted in life. But I think it was, this has been hard for me to recognize over the years, but growing up, I grew up with a lot of actor friends, like even in high school, we all had the same dream. Yep. We all were aspiring actors, but I feel like a lot of my friends abandoned me once I started getting success on YouTube. I think maybe there was a bit of jealousy there, or maybe there was this perception that like now that I'm an influencer, I must just be a total asshole. And so I have had arrived in this place where I'm like, first of all, still the mask mandate was still there. We're still in the middle of a lockdown. Minnesota winters are among the most brutal. The They're hard. They're the coldest winters there is. It's dark. It's cold. I'm a full-time, I'm, well, I'm not a full-time YouTuber, but I should be because I was, I was burning the candle on both ends. Or, yes. Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was, yeah, working super hard. And I was like, I have no friends. I had one friend and he later moved away. You had me. I had you. Well, yeah, I do have Tom. Actually, to be fair, Thomas has been a great safeguard against mental decay for me, which is embarrassing to admit, but <laughs> I'm cool. But he's also, he's also a work colleague. You know, there's, there's a it's, difference. It's a difference. I agree. It's yeah. like our, our, our friendship 
because there is a friendship there. Yeah. It can never be like a truly innocent friendship just because there's money involved. And yeah, like, there's money involved. It changes things fundamentally. And like, that's not a bad thing. And we enjoy each other's company, but we probably see each other like 35 hours a week. Yeah, it's like we we don't hang because we do that enough. <laughs> like, you I know? mean, I just asked him before this. I was like, hey, dude, do you want to come to a basketball game? And I said, suck me. <laughs> no. He said no. And I was like, I sort of expected this. I'm like, are we also going to see a game together? <laughs> It's like, will you leave me alone? (laughs) Do I not produce enough? God. He just wants me to follow him around with a camera everywhere. (laughs) I mean, we've hung out once in a while. Yes. We sometimes will, like, by sometimes I mean, like, once every six months, we'll sit down to watch a movie together. Yes. (laughs) And then Vincent was the only reason we hung out other than that, because Vincent was like, we should do a work guys night. And I was like, no. (laughs) But I did it anyway. And then I messed them up in Smash. Come see me. <laughs> Vincent is my web developer. Uh, he's kind of handles my business end. He handles the website. And one night he 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 suggested that Thomas and I play Smash Bros together. And I got to be it was really fun. I got to be honest, it was a, a little weird though cuz I'm like we all just work together. Yeah. And now we're are we just we're just going to hang out or <laughs> Yeah, it was like and also with me and you, it's like I see you so often that I'm like, "Oh, We've talked about literally everything. What yeah. do I have to say to you? Ryan? I have nothing left to say to you, bro. <laughs> yeah. But that loneliness, <laughs> we got on such a tangent here. I know. <laughs> that loneliness is really dangerous. Yeah. And I just see, I actually see no way to solve this problem. What advice can we give to not only the average guy, but also to ourselves? It's not like we're above these problems i mean sure we can be like oh i get matches on hinge but yeah it's like i don't think i'm above these problems no i don't think i am either like you know i even get like way less matches than you because as i've said you're prettier than me i don't know so about I, that, I, 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 let me finish <laughs> yeah i get it you always want to interrupt the ugly guy don't let him talk it's fine hey guys in the comments who's prettier <laughs> rate us uh yes yeah. so anyways uh, i think you you know it's annoying but like you can just <laughs> max out what you have right it's like take the take good photos is like the best advice you could get if you want to maximize your chances in on a dating app you know uh and then you know that truly is like the number one thing everything else is so almost inconsequential in comparison to that you know when you show up don't be like hi can i smell you like don't don't weird her out in the first 10 seconds <laughs> you know like try to keep it together try to be fun and cool and if you're not fun and cool maybe work on yourself before trying to date you know one thing that i just wish i would have internalized sooner let's just get sick fucking bodies yes i'm like why have i not done this until now i mean granted It's hard work. Yeah. But it is really, really rewarding. Yes. I think I'm probably like, how long do you think? Three years away? Two years away from looking sick? Yeah. Sick? Yeah. Like, but yeah. But even looking great. Yeah. I bet I can look great in six months time. Yeah. I think you can look very good in six months time. I mean, that's good enough. Yes. But truly, like, I love this process i love fitness so much now that i don't even mind if it's going to take two or three years no like i'm like i have no problem with that. that's the almost thing for me it's like going to the gym for me the aesthetics have become like the cherry on top you know it's like the cake for me is getting those prs and having the depression leave me you know (laughs) like that is what is the that's the thing that keeps me there yeah you know i love it the aesthetics is just like oh this is cool the rejection rejection doesn't hurt as much anymore because I'm like, whatever. I'll just I don't even care. I'll just I max can make love up. to a barbell. I'll, I don't exact, need you. That's actually kind of true. I'm like I can just max myself out. Like yeah. In fact, this gives me something you can't. So <laughs> yeah, stimulation, pleasure. Yeah, you were never good in bed, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's directed at a specific person. Hey, welcome back to the damage that pops, <laughs> where we just cry. yeah i mean um and then to like the growing populate if you you know i don't like the term incel uh i didn't have sex till i was in you know basically my mid-20s and uh i never considered myself an incel because uh i don't know i didn't really consider it involuntary 
And it's not like I was trying to practice celibacy, yep. but it was like, I didn't feel like I should lower my standards just to be like, I'm not a virgin anymore. You know, I didn't really care mm -hmm. enough to do that. And I was always of the opinion, like, yeah, if I wanted to like have sex with an uglier woman, you, hey, it's there. I could pull it off. Like I'd attracted women who like I was not attracted to, but I always had an image of women that like I felt like I could get that I wanted, but it wasn't my time yet. So I worked on myself and things got better. And then I eventually was able to get the women that I wanted to get. So it's like I, my advice to like the incel population is like, yo, patience. You know, there's no rush. I know society makes being a virgin like so uncool and that sucks. But it's like having sex. It's nothing, bro. Like it means nothing. You it's know? Kind of, I'm like it's like not really that big of a deal. It's not at all. And if I you wish, really break yeah. down the actual process process of like insert. Exert. insert exert insert exert i mean it only lasts minutes yeah listen feels great but like hey, great. at the end of the day it's like you're still empty after it's literally just friction <laughs> yeah and it's like it's just not like bro lie to your friends i don't care like tell them you did it and just move on like it's not a big deal don't like don't do something you'll regret just to like not have the v card you know i think the bigger problem isn't getting sex i mean i think you have to have sex to realize it's not a big deal. You yes. just have to. I, I agree. I know like e even hearing that advice when yeah. I was a virgin yeah. is like hard to internalize, but mm -hmm. like I want, if it gives you any hope, we're right. You know? Yeah. But the bigger thing, because this is a big deal, like connection. Yeah. Like feeling truly wanted and wanting someone is really, really important. Mm -hmm. I'm only realizing this now in my late twenties because it took me a long time to get to a point where I thought a, a relationship for me is even important. Mm. Like when I was 24 and living in LA, having a girlfriend was kind of a goal for me. Yeah. Like I, I want to have a hot girlfriend. Yeah. And I would like, I vision boarded that. Yes. Of course you did. And it like never, it never happened. I was like, uh, I, I just couldn't figure out how to do it. But I think I always had a, once I hit 25, once I really started focusing on this channel and really, like there's some shape came to my dreams coming true. Mm. Like it, it started to feel a little bit possible. Yeah. Yeah. And by a little bit possible, I mean, even like back when I had 10,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I could probably get to a million and not even be that talented. I mean, I, and not to knock on anyone. I but mean, look at the amount of untalented million subscriber YouTubers. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, a I looked at like, I looked at Thomas Frank's YouTube channel <laughs> and like literally no, no disrespect to Thomas. Yeah, Frank, yeah, yeah. But I was like, he makes informational videos about how to be more productive. Like this is not something I cannot do. It's not rocket science. It's not ro like I can do that. Yeah. And shout out to Thomas Frank, man. He benches what? 310? Yeah. He's better than me. He's better than us. Yeah. And uh, he's been in the game. He's an OG. He's OG. been in the game. And you know what? He killed it when we did the director series. Very sweet guy in person. Yeah, you know? we met him. Yeah. All love. All love, no hate. But uh, but he was definitely like, a, there was a reference to me. Well, I'm like, I can get a million subscribers because Thomas Frank has a million subscribers. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I can do what he does. I mean, granted, he, he had the, the cinema cameras and the lighting and the shots was so much superior than mine. You know, it still is. Yep. But I'm like... Theoretically, making an informational, like an Ali Abdal, making an informational video about how to be more productive. Yeah. That's literally what I thought when I had 10,000 subscribers. I'm like, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, if I can get to a million subscribers, I can make a movie. Yeah. I, it just, sure, it, it makes it easier, right? Which is like we talked about in the last episode. It was the next low hanging fruit. Even yes. though getting to a million, I mean, I still haven't done it. It's been four years in the game, but I was like, it's possible, you know? So in some ways, the girlfriend problem became irrelevant because I'm like, I don't need a girlfriend. She's not going to solve the problem of making my dreams come true. In yeah. fact, she's going to get in the way. And I sort of still maintain that. And it's like no amount of romance or love can really solve the, the existential problem of my life, which is that I have to make my dreams come true. Yes. At the same time, I know it's really important. At the end of the day, life comes down to your relationships. It's like the most important part of life. And I, yeah, I think, um, I think, in many ways, because like at the end of the day, you're a man mm -hmm. and you're going to feel your urges. And yep. if you're single, they're going to drive you on the apps, you know, like eventually you will be overwhelmed by the urge 
totally. And you will get on the apps, especially if you're a dialed in guy and like you're seeing that like, oh, I'm doing pretty well in real life. Like I bet I could, you know, let's see. And so you're going to test the waters every once in a while if you're single. And I think uh, having a relationship, it can just take all the focus and energy out of dating because dating it's like a lot of time invested a lot of energy invested it's a big waste it's like a sinkhole it's a big sinkhole yeah it's actually the number one reason why i'm not interested yeah me neither and like so i think in that way having a relationship um especially if the woman is like supportive and great Mm -hmm. it's like that can just proceed you on the way to your goals without any interruption or delay and like you know keep you happy i don't think it has to get in the way is my point we're coming to the last segment of this episode so we should kind of go in the same direction as we have with every episode which is can we break down let's say focus now can we break down like the strategy by which we can max out what we have kind of like the beat the game because the game is harder than ever. I do. I do believe that. I, I do think the marketplace. You, we are both in relationships, but if we weren't, the marketplace is harder than it, it ever was. To get to get back to what we have now, it would still be super hard. Yes, totally. Like, sure, we could get a date. I could get matches on Hinge, but I don't think I could get a girlfriend very easily. To be honest, like, I think it would be challenging. Someone I'd be happy with and all that. Yeah, I mean, I'll, that's also just going the other way. Like, finding a good girl is hard. Like, yeah. finding a girl that doesn't repulse me tough <laughs> you know uh there, there's a lot of women in the comments who'd be disappointed <laughs> <laughs> i'm taken all right so some advice first of all get your body looking sick it yes. only takes two to three years i'm only six months or seven months into it so i don't have full authority to speak on it but and neither do i i like the way i look but uh i'm not as big as i need to be <laughs> but you look great you look great thanks I mean. man Wow. <laughs> the, when Nikhil and I say we're in relationships, it's with one another. <laughs> yeah. So Wheat Waffles has this great video about like most men, like he, even though he's completely in the whole like looks are the only thing that matters, yeah, he talks about maxing. all the small ways that we don't even allow ourselves to be at our baseline level of looks. Yeah. Like things like having bad breath. Yep. Having anything, having too high body fat percentage is like one of the fastest way to kill your good looks. A lot of guys actually have good looks underneath a lot of fat. Yes. And guys, listen, like if, if the aesthetics thing and if getting girls is your motivation to get in the gym, use it to get in the gym. Because what you will find is going to the gym is so much more awesome than like using it to make yourself look better, Mm -hmm. you know, and you will just fall in love with the gym. But if your first like ego boost to get there is like, let me look better for girls. Hey, do that, you mm-hmm. know? But especially as you age into your like mid to late 20s, mm-hmm. if you s- maintain a good body, it's like now you are one of those top 1% guys on the apps. Yeah, well, as time goes by, if you choose to stay single in yeah. your late 20s and early 30s, everyone around you is only going to get fatter and dumber looking. Yes. Just by virtue of you being thin and muscular, like you are top of the cream of the crop. Yeah. That's, what, that's kind of what I love about being into fitness now because I kind of got into it later in my life. Yeah. But everyone around me is looking sloppier by the day. And I feel like I'm just like looking leveled better. up. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's the, just do that, man. It just, just literally put your head down and get fit for yes. over two to three years. Totally. Just get looking. Okay. Alpha Destiny had made this great point. Like every guy can work up to a 490. Like even if you have bad genetics, you can work up to a 495 deadlift. Yep. I'm like that. Okay. I want that, man. I want Just that. Get it. I want that five plate deadlift. Get after it. There's no excuse. There's really no excuse. I have friends who work, you know, full-time jobs. I have friends who work till they're like, fu- you know, they don't have great situation, but, but they still get to the gym. There's no excuses. There's somebody with a tougher situation than you who still gets in the gym. You don't have an excuse that will satisfy me. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. you know? And so just just make sure you get that. The next one I would say almost is like maintain a level of like interacting with people on a like personal mm-hmm. social level so that when you like get the date and go there, like you can shine because I've just been on dates where I have to do all the legwork for the conversation. Oh, totally. And it's such a turnoff if, if you can't, talk to me like and you'll, you'll just find being a good conversationalist is such an asset in life period but game is a real thing it's real it's very important dude i have a handful of 
YouTube coaching clients now. If anyone's interested, you want to grow your own channel, you can find more info in the description box. Mm -hmm. Shit, while we're at it, we should probably promote the newsletter. I have a newsletter. I put out weekly tips on creativity, filmmaking, productivity, how to be a better person. Sign up for that shit. Put your email in. Put your email in. Some of my coaching clients, like it's literally just breaking down the A-roll. Like there is such, especially because so much of now advertising and media, like it's so important to be able to present well and speak well and engage people, you know? Like if we, if we couldn't talk to each other, none of this would work. No one would tune in, right? No. So your ability to have a sense of presence and like even sinking into the moments where it, even in the moments of quiet, it's an animated and alive. I think that is the key, that word presence. It's yeah. like you have to be right here, right now. And like even if a girl pulls out her phone on a date, wow, red flag. Yeah. You know, I hate that. It's so annoying. No, but there's two different kinds of looks that <laughs> your face it, it's such a radical difference between the two of them. And I see them because when I evaluate other YouTubers now, I can see it in their eyes, especially because I'm studying some of my clients. Yep. Your eyes have to be full of life. There has to be an animation. There's a glazed look that you get if yeah. you're not there. Yeah, you and gotta. They can tell. Everybody can tell, even if they can't verbalize it. They know. Something like semen retention really helps with that. Mm. As a man, it like it gives you something. It gives you an aliveness in yeah. your eyes. You your always eyes gotta sneak it in. I always gotta say no fat. Dude, I don't think I'll ever be able to get through one of these. Every single Becoming the Killer podcast episode is gonna have a mention yeah, of no fat. Without being like, oh, but if you do no fat, this is just that's yeah. Dude, I am so I'm just so back to the old ways. <laughs> I some one thing I would recommend to a lot of my coaching clients or to people in general is like actually taking something like an improv class mm. or an acting class. Mm. Like I think one of the reasons I'm decent on camera is because of all the acting training I've taken. I bet that's a big part of it for sure. Especially with improv, like the secret to success with improv is um, being present. Mm. It's weird. But like if you think too far ahead of what you're going to say and what you're going to do, you like stop being. Oh, it's the same thing with freestyling. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. It, it's so weird. You think you have to like plan out the words as you're going. Mm. But if you do, that's when you stumble and you're gone. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah but that seems I, I admire people who can freestyle so much. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Same one of I took a really intensive acting class in Mumbai and um, the number one advice he gave to be a good actor, to be a good anything is like always stay with your breath. Mm. And that's the advice he gave. He's like, you can be a good actor just by taking my acting class. As you go about your life, every single moment of being alive, stay with your breath. It's a very meditative idea. Yeah, very meditative. But then that just keeps you so present and dialed in all the time. Yeah. So we got we got get yourself looking succulent. Yes. We got develop some charisma. I, for me, I feel like the improv class and some of these other things helpful. Also reading books and watching movies is super helpful in that regard. I agree. You can like, you can see what it's, you know, it's, you know, people say like watching TV is a waste of time, but you can, when you watch a great character on television, like Thomas Shelby is a great example of this. You can sort of see great actors communicate through silence a lot. And you can sort of see what like, charisma in the quiet in between moments look like and you can it, i think you can sort of internalize it a little bit when you can see like oh yeah like what does it what does it mean to like create a dance and a, a sense of aliveness in a conversation even in the moments in between where you're mm. just actively listening and stuff yeah so i mean also it's just I, I feel more inspired as a human being when i've come across great art i agree i think it's just um also just keeping yourself interesting yeah. It's like you have things to talk about. You have things to draw from, you know, you, you have to have something to talk about. And if you bring up, you know, whatever, if you only play video games, it's like you're going to end up on the date and you can't, you will not, don't speak about the video games, bro. Can't do it. So you're going to need something that like she will be able to relate to you on. I also think it's really important. It doesn't help right away. Cause like you said, you can't talk about this. You can't tell someone like oh, I make a ton of money. Yeah. But there's a mental confidence that making, you don't have to make a ton of money, but you have to make enough ideally where you don't think about money. Yes. Where you don't, you don't like, let's say you're getting dinner. You don't ever have to worry about the price of the bill. And nothing shows on your face because yeah. it will. If you're worried, if you're worried, it'll show up. You know, if you really have to worry about the bill, just don't go on a date. Just, just keep you're not ready to go on a date then. Yeah. Like if, if going on the date is fucking with your pocket, like you should stay home. 
Like there's different things to focus on right now, you yep. know? So it's like, you know, we've talked about this before, but money is oxygen. It's not, it's not inherently, it doesn't have any v- inherent virtue with it, but it just makes everything else possible. Yes. And you know, in, in the U S a good amount of people have no savings or anything like that. But if you can create just a little bit of a sense of just freedom in your mind around money, this could mean that you still have a corporate job and you're just making an okay salary, but just getting to yourself to a place where you're not, you're just not broke, right? You're yeah. just, it just, it allows for these other things to develop better, like showing more charisma in a conversation. Can we think of one more? Last one to close this out. We got, we got, get yourself looking juicy. Succulent. Succulent. Game. Get better game. Man, guys, I really do believe this. Of course, I am at heart an actor and a filmmaker. So if you have a cheap improv class or something you can take in your community, Honestly, like honestly, try something like a stand-up comedy if you have the balls for it too. <laughs> hey man, I, I did stand up like ten or eleven times. Uh, you will face your fears. Like, you also have just been pursuing comedy for years, and it's given you such a baseline level of. You do a lot of these things naturally that a lot of people have to work for. Like you are very present in conversations, mm. and you can think of jokes immediately on the spot because you're not planning them. Yeah, but that's because you you literally it's like building up an aer- aerobic base. Yeah, but for like the ability to stay present. Yeah. Like I just live here. Yeah, you yeah. just live. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I think, um, and a lot of that, it's like not natural. It's like a lot of that was just work for. Yeah. It's training. Yeah. It's, it's as much training as a training workout program. Is. And it's just like, yeah, recognize where your weaknesses are. If, if that's a big weakness of yours, like you're going to need to like, just try to be a six in all of them. Like find out where you're a one yeah. and like start putting a lot of energy into that you'll make the most gains if you work on your weakest spot. Yes. And also this is one a ton of people are behind in because we just don't have to interact like we used to. Mm. So a, yeah. lot of, a lot of guys, they think they're charismatic and then on the spot. Yeah. You're just not as, you're not as comfortable no. in, in being present. Dude, I don't know if I can think of a fourth one or are those in terms of getting, I mean, I, I guess feel like the, we covered our bases and like we hit looks money status or looks money game. And for me, like status uh, feels less relevant. Dude, I guess I, I would maybe put status. Yeah, I, I do agree that status is the least relevant, but in the context of dating, I would put status as having enough of a portfolio online mm. where you just don't come across as a serial killer to the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually just, that's actually a, a real one. I'm yeah, not gonna lie. That's super important. Yeah. Have a fucking Instagram. Have a digital footprint. Like, have a, have a, on your Instagram, literally cover your fucking bases. Be like, look, <laughs> I have male friends. I have female friends. I have a family. I have not killed them. What do you mean? Like, yeah, just just make sure she knows. Like, make sure she can go and like stalk her, stalk you, and do her thing, just so she knows you're not insane. Dude, have filmable hobbies. Yes. Have hobbies that you can show that you like. <laughs> I'm not into woodworking. I kind of glanced at it. We went to a woodworking shop for a video. Yep. But if I was on the market again, I would literally just create hobbies that would, cr- it'd be an easy talking point. I would literally just do it and be like woodworking. <laughs> just even like pictures of the things you've made on your yeah, Instagram. Totally. Story. Like I see that all the time. Just have stuff that's a portfolio. Yeah. Have great photos. I think every guy, every person would benefit from owning a camera ideal like and just like having good photos and i things. know like guys if you don't have a camera if you're not a camera guy yeah you can find a friend who's got a camera i promise you and you also gotta, yeah and also your cell phone composition is more important than gear totally learn a little bit of composition it's not that hard learn how to light for your face light for your face lighting and composition get great photos of stuff put it on your ig Definitely put it on your dating profile. Yep. Link your IG in your dating profile. These things actually, it seems superficial. This is the world we live in now. We live in a visual world. You're selling yourself as like a product, as like a brand package. It's really fucked up in some ways, but that's if that's the game you got to play. And Hamza, all these other guys, they're totally right. It's getting harder than ever because the game, like the things that were not valuable, that maybe shouldn't be as valuable, they're just important now, man. Yeah. You don't want to be one of those guys who shows up in the bottom 90%, like never surfaces in the algorithm. Yes. We're not going to title this video something that's not going to get clicks. 
we're going to put a title in there about like dating and incels and being single because yes. that's how the game works. That's how we're playing the game. And as I said earlier, like we can whine about the state of the world or we can accept it and play the game. Exactly. Like, and I think we want to be big winners. So we are accepting it and playing the game. Yeah. Play the game, play to win. Who cares if it's getting harder? We're still going to win. Yes. Becoming the Killer Podcast. Every Sunday. We'll see you guys in the next one.